Hello guys, welcome back to Piping Engineers guys. In today's video, we are back again with our piping interview questions. So some of my friends would be looking for a piping job change. So they would be requiring this interview questions. So guys, uh, this video you can watch and prepare for your interviews. And I hope after watching this video, you guys can get a job. For more better experience, please watch at 1.5 x speed. So guys, for more videos and updates, please like follow and subscribe to our channel so let's begin our today's learning journey and see what are the piping questions that your interviewer can ask you so guys starting today's video our first question is pressure vessels are built as per which sme section so one of the important question and one basic one so sme as per sme section 8 division 1 that is the uh, sme standard which is followed when a pressure vessel is fabricated next question is guys what does awwa stands for so awwa stands for american water works association so this is the full form of american water works association similarly you guys can tell what is the full form of asme so you know your interviewer can ask you and it depends upon the job for which you are giving the interview next question is guys walls are tested and inspected as per which american standard so you know most of our piping engineering we rely on american standards so first of all to become a very successful piping engineer and a piping supervisor or let's say fitter one should be knowing each and every american standard not thoroughly uh, by the standard by heart but he should be aware of the names so when we want to know we will refer apa 598 so apa 598 is the wall in which how a wall will be tested what are the timings for it will be tested and what are the processes through which its testing will be done it is mentioned so the answer is apa 598 next question is guys what are difference between pipe and tube so very basic question and i guess i have covered this question in many other videos also but yes it is an important one so pipe is identified by your nominal bore and thickness very well known and your tube is identified again by od and thickness so there is a very bit difference between the two but they both serve a different purpose in the industry next question is guys what is steam tracing so steam tracing you would be knowing it is a process uh, in which is used to prevent the fluid passing through a process line by freezing or keeping the temperature high so basically uh, the line uh, the the fluid line which which the in which the fluid is flowing and we don't want that fluid to get freezed so we check it that line with the steam lines why so that the temperature of the fluid is always on the higher side and it always flow so that it doesn't get frozen up so that is what steam tracing is and generally for services like coal tar one of the best example and basic example that i give every time steam tracing is done many other services depending upon industry to industry steam tracing is done moving on to the next question guys uh, what do you mean by ibr and which comes which line comes under ibr purview so my friends which are uh, looking this watching this video from outside india so ibr stands for I, uh, indian boiler regulation act so all most of the countries they have their own boiler regulation act so ibr here stands for indian boiler regulation act so there are few few criteria under which the lines or the pressure lines comes under the boiler regulation act so that is mentioned again in the book laws of ibr so lines having maximum design pressure so lines having design pressure maximum working pressure about 3.5 kg centimeter square it will be it will be tested and checked under the ibr purview so ibr will have a look at this drawing line line size is about 10 inches diameter having design pressure 1 kg per centimeter square and above will also come under ibr purview lines with design pressure less than 1 kg a centimeter square are excluded users of steam like st steam tracing lines jacket of steam jacketed lines steam heating coil within the equipment are also excluded from ibr scope so the steam jacketing line which we uh, read about the in the last slide will not come under the ibr purview next is boiler feed water lines to steam generator condensate lines to steam generator and flash drum shall also be under the ibr purview next question is guys which sme code is used to determine the thickness of welded and stainless rod steel pipe so you would be you should be knowing that from which code or which standard the thickness of pipe is selected so it is sme b36.10 in case of your wrought steel pipes but in case of stainless steel pipes it will be 36.19 so thicknesses are mentioned in these two 
standards i will say and there are tables in which uh, as per the schedule the thicknesses have been mentioned next question is guys what is the difference between machine and stud bolt so machine bolt has head on one side and nut on the other side while stud bolts have nut on both the sides so this is the basic difference next is what is provided in gas lines to remove condensate so answer is drip board so the it is it is similar uh, not exactly similar but the way we remove condensate from steam lines um, using a steam tra uh, steam trap similarly in gas lines there are there are condensate so we remove this condensate with the help of a drip board guys okay, so moving on to the next slide yeah which gas is used for the purging of gas lines so which gas is used for the purging of gas lines so you know when before starting a plant we wanted our system to get purged so uh, again we cannot use a gas which may you know may blast the system so we go for nitrogen and steam so bo bo both of these gases or both of these fluids they are inert in nature and if it's if they stays within the system also they will not harm so in order to remove the contamination or the foreign particles nitrogen and steam are used in the time of purging next question is guys which size of nb of pipe is equal to the od of pipe so the answer is 14 inch so pipe sizes less than 14 inches your nominal bore is not equal to the outside diameter of the pipe but upon 14 inches nominal bore is equal to the outside diameter of the pipe next question is vent is always provided at high point similarly the drain is always provided at low point so why so uh, in in case of your hydro testing or when we testings are done so we provide the drain why so because we wanted to remove that excessive liquid so we wanted every part every single amount of liquid to get away from the piping system so we provide this uh, dra uh, dra uh, dra sorry we provide this low point drains while to remove the included or the uh, entrapped gases we use this high point vents so they are provided at the highest points so that every gas which is present inside the system can move outside and our system can be you know free of the entrapped gases next is which valve is not used for regulation so your answer is gate valve so why uh, because uh, gate valve is only used for isolation purpose it is not used for your regulation purpose so guys next question is why don't we take a branch for cryogenic services from bottom side through the fluid in liquid state so we should be knowing what this cryogenic means so the cryogenic in cryogenic services what happens is the temperature is basically in minus so when we try to take the uh, when we try to take the branch connection from the bottom side as i told you the temperature is in always already in negative there is a chance of ice formation during normal operation and since ice flows from bottom of the pipe it will block through the branch pipe connection so that is why whenever we are dealing with any cryogenic service like nitrogen helium or hydrogen and etc etc we try to take the branch connection from top side why the reason is because there may be ice formation and because once the ice is formed your pipe will get flogged and it may be it may be possible that your gas is not able to flow so we try to take it from top pipe so that is the basic reason we, why we don't take the bottom connection this is one of the important question people can ask whenever you are going for any re refinery interview or air separation plant interview question so guys i hope in today's video you would have learned something so guys for more videos and updates please like follow and subscribe to our channel you may write us if you feel like something to be changed so guys thank you for watching the video thanks a lot